Jesus is alive wow. and he is alive forevermore. On behalf of Pastor Andre and Pastor Jenny, all the way from Florida in the USA, welcome once again to Faith Today as we come to you live from Studio C, all the way from the Faith Dome, Buffalo City, South Africa. And you know what? Before we go any further, this is a big shout out to Pastor Andre and Pastor Jenny, everyone on the other side mm -hmm. of the waters, as well then as everyone here in Buffalo City. For today is a historic day. We are celebrating 400 days of consecutive broadcasting on Faith TV. So come on right there where you are, right there on social media. Give a big, big, big shout out to the Faith TV team, everyone who has been instrumental in making these broadcasts a reality and being able to get into and to come into your home and wherever it is that you normally participate with us from, wherever you might be from, and wherever you are, that we just want to say, Faith TV, every single one working behind the scenes, Pastor Andre, Pastor Jenny, we salute you all, 400 days. Chantel, what a historic moment and what a time it is to be alive. 
absolute privilege for us to be here tonight to just celebrate this and the band and the musicians are all on fire tonight. I know that you can feel the presence of the Lord in your house. So I want you to just raise that level of expectation today. And I just saw that the number 400, which is derived from uh, multiplying eight times, um, yeah, eight times 50, it says there, it is a divinely perfect period. So tonight I'm just placing a demand on the anointing of God to just bring that into our presence as we're going to encounter Him having a divinely perfect time in God's presence. So raise your level of expectation and say tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, this is going to be my encounter with my God and everything in my life is about to change. Amen, amen. Brad Jazan, welcome back to Faith Today. Tonight is indeed going to be a fabulous evening. Tonight it's going to be a fabulous, Pastor Kevin. I'm so looking forward to it. And you know, it's been 400 days of faith Come on, that's messages. Right. I don't know about any other channel or any other network that has been on. This is the channel of faith where you get faithful messages, but a program has come to you live consecutively, like Pastor Kevin said, for 400 days with faithful content. I want you to give a big thank you shout out in the comment section. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're on our YouTube platform, type it in the comment section. Show us your thankfulness. Give us an emoji hand, hand wave over there or some praise hands in the comment section. We want to see that you are thankful. Give a shout out to the team who have been hard at work behind the scenes Absolutely. here in Africa, there in the USA, those in the UK working on all the different platforms, all those traps you see on the screens, all the details. It takes a team to do what we yeah. do together here. So give a big shout out, say thank you. And if you are watching on any of those platforms, drop one of your country flags in the comment section. If you're watching from a certain continent or a certain country, we want you to drop it in the flames. I saw an Australian flag in the comment section. Drop it in the comment section. Let us know where you are watching from. We want to be able to engage with you tonight. And I'm really expectant. You know, I shared this a few weeks ago. A faith worth having is a faith worth sharing. So I want you to click that share button on your screen wherever you're watching from tonight. If you aren't watching on Facebook and you're watching on your mobile device or if you're watching on a tablet, if you're watching on the TV screen, I want you to go quickly onto Facebook Click that share button. A faith worth having is a faith worth, worth sharing. So help us share the broadcast tonight so we can get the message of faith out there. Amen. Welcome, faith family. So good to be with you again. I don't know about you, but there's an expectancy in my heart for tonight. Yeah, and I trust on. that God will raise your level of expectancy tonight as tonight is going to be something special. Tonight, you're going to encounter God. And first and foremost, I just want to, re I really feel in my heart to welcome all the people watching in old age homes, the elderly. If you are between the ages of like 70, 80 year old, I want to salute you. I want to say welcome. Come Thank on. you so much for watching. If you are elderly person and I also want to say I know that Brad and I, our friend who's 90 years old she phoned us this week so we want to say welcome on to I know that you are a regular on on the program <laughs> welcome to every single person who's watching tonight and as we're going to be speaking about a very special topic I know that tonight your life's going to change and as we speak about this and as you open up your heart and as you receive the word that God has for you tonight I know that God's going to give you divine leading divine Divine leading is so important because it goes beyond natural wisdom, attained wisdom, anything like that. When you get divine leading, your life changes in Jesus' name because something can maybe look good on paper, but when you get divine leading from the Holy Spirit Himself, I'm telling you, your life is going to change. You're going to walk in divine purpose. You're going to walk in every single thing that God has for you. Amen. Amen. You know what? We are ready. We're going to get into the Word of the Lord momentarily. And uh, I would like to already encourage you, get your Bibles, get your notebooks, get your pens, because we are going to delve into the Word of the Lord tonight. And we are believing, we've been praying and we're believing with you tonight that every single one who is tuned in to this broadcast, that you are about to have a radical, supernatural encounter with the King of Kings Amen. and the Lord of Lords. Come so on. even right now, quickly, if you could click on that share button, tag a couple of people that you know even right now are desperate. They are hungry. They might be seeking, but you know they might be seeking in the wrong place. Jesus said, if you seek me, you shall find me. Mm. And we also know that the Bible clearly says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Mm. So are you, are you ready tonight? to have that radical, supernatural encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Well, get ready, because tonight is your night. Come on. Now, 
Jazan, well, I loved uh, what it is that you were talking about a little bit earlier, talking about uh, individuals who are in fact watching that are elderly, they are in old age homes, and you know, we, we hear this all the time, frail care centers that are actually tuned in yeah. right now. They literally keep the channel on, on Faith TV, and this is what everyone watches 24 seven. And um, I just had this thought just now, you know, you mentioned someone by the, you know, with, with who is already 90 years old. So. Let's maybe see tonight if we can mm -hmm. find the oldest wow. person yeah, who is actually cool. watching like Faith it. TV. Yeah. Yeah. So, really so, <laughs> so let us know in the comment section right now, you know, who is watching Faith mm. TV with you? Let us know the age of that individual. I want the name and I want to see the age of mm. that particular individual. And also say what the relation is. So in other words, say this is your mother or this is your grandmother mm. or it might be your great, great grandmother. And uh, let us know what the person's age is. And uh, we would love to find tonight, we would love to find mm one of or the oldest person who is actually tuned in to faith tv so let us know what can right those there. do who's not on facebook on social media because i know we get emails yes and those absolutely. people are quickly to email us so what's the email address <laughs> the can... email address is right there at the bottom of the screen partner at myfaithtv.com right. partner at myfaithtv.com or you can do it the good old-fashioned way and that's picking up a phone <laughs> and phoning any one of the numbers on the screen depending on where you are from in the world so you can phone us even and you can say so and so is watching with you and this is the age of that particular individual we would love to find Thank the oldest Lord. viewer of faith tv the oldest partner of faith tv we would love to make that uh, wow. discovery right here tonight on 400 days celebrating to 400 days of consecutive live broadcasting right here from Faith TV. Mm. Now, looking quickly at the uh, the comment section already, um, I see there's many people already uh, who's who's commenting, and uh, yeah, oh, I, I see your <laughs> mom, Jazan, yeah. is already commenting <laughs> there. Grand, saying, yeah. yeah, so so Jazan, your grand, five. yeah, your grand, three days from now, she's uh, turning yes. 85. Yay, grand! Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, there's many more people that are joining us even right now, and uh, Amber is saying my hubby's 61 now. Okay, mm -hmm. he, he, he's, 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 he's a spring chicken. Don't okay. insult him, he's young. <laughs> okay, so, 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 Ambra, your hubby, who's 61, he's a spring chicken. Okay, so, uh, so, so, <laughs> and then, uh, Aku, uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, so forgive me if I mispronounce your name. I get in trouble all the time. Uh, Aku Ray, who's saying I am 38 Ach, years old. Okay, you are a <laughs> spring chicken, okay? And uh, I hope that doesn't get lost in translation. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it, you it's know, we mean no offense by that. But uh, looking at the uh, number of people that are tuning in right now, uh, Reshma, who's, who's tuning in, Rosala, Governor who is tuning in and um, more and more and more people are in fact tuning in Alec Boyson as always yeah. uh, Watching all the way from Cambridge in the UK and then also I saw my good friend online Leo dos Santos uh, a big shout out to you hey, and uh, every single one of your of your friends and uh, everyone connected with your ministry as well we, we, We've obviously had Leo on uh, a couple of times with us as a special guest and uh, he is faithful uh, To faith TV and is tuning in all the time and uh, also just uh, as we went live I got a message again from uh, another good friend of mine Thompson Guveni all the way from Pala Borva who's saying he's watching they literally get a lot of people together who are watching this broadcast together so a uh, big shout out to everyone in Pala Borva in South Africa and Chantel who have you got? Ooh, like a dinger. I'm gonna get to it now. <laughs> uh, oh I love everyone because I see people are now not, they're not with age now, they're with what Pastor Kevin's wearing and all of those things. <laughs> so uh, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> oh, but Ria oh, says, Ria, our faithful friend, she says there's no old person near her. She's yeah. young at heart. <laughs> Audrey says, good evening. She's from Pretoria. She's 75. Hello, Audrey. Rochelle also says from Carnivon, from the Northern, Northern Cape. Then um, someone here says, Mudungairi, sorry if I pronounce it incorrectly, she says she's 64. But then I see Shane last week, you also said something about Pastor Kevin's shirt. Now he says, I noticed Pastor Kevin has his short collar shirt on this evening. <laughs> yeah, last week he was he was he was mentioning the fact the that long I long collar. Yeah, no. 
I didn't even know what to put in. Spot the dress code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sure. we, we, we're having fun as well. Children of God must, the joy of the Lord is here. But we want to welcome all of you, our friends um, and family. And I pray that tonight you'll just have a revelation that you're so young at heart. Mm. Because that is what everyone who is old or older or more mature has mm. been saying. They just say they love it. They love to tune in. They love mm. to be challenged. They love to change. They allow the Word of God to change them whenever they hear it. And that is what I really like. When I hear a person who is mature but is not afraid when they are convicted by the Spirit to say, Lord, oh, here's another thing that I can change or you can change in me so that I can represent you well. Hey man, Brad, you saying, who have you got? Pastor Kevin, I found the oldest on the network so far tonight. Salome Madiba says so she's watching with her mom. Her mom is 91 on Woo, Saturday. So in two on. days, sure. her mom will be 91. So far, we found the oldest. I know Auntie Bonnie will be 91 this year as well. Um, and I want to put out a challenge to you. Those who are watching, maybe those who are watching in frail care centers or may have contact with frail care centers or old age homes, I want to put a challenge to you. Next week, I'm going to show you a picture of Auntie Vani that we took with her when we actually saw her in person and we blessed her with a faith daily devotional. I want to put a challenge to you. Those of you who are in frail care centers or know our frail care centers, why don't you purchase one or two faith daily devotionals and go and bless some of the elderly in those mm -hmm. homes Come on. so they can read faith daily content mm -hmm. every single day. They don't have to wait for the evenings to come to tune into a, to a program like this. They can pick it up in the mornings, have tea yeah. with their friends in the come frail on. care centers in the old age homes. They can read the devotional when they pick up their phone at tea time to phone their family members, their grandchildren. But so Kevin, you know what it's like to phone, yeah. phone the children? Yeah. To find the grandchildren or the great grandchildren, you know. Um, I know with Pastor Kevin's dad, he's calling, calling the kids, finding out how they're doing or visiting. You know, you can pick up that devotional. You can read something, deliver a faithful message, and that can be a carrier of that message. So that's my challenge to you tonight. Get in touch with us. Let us know where you, where you are connecting from, and we can get some of those books to you, and that you can purchase them from Faith TV, and then you can be a blessing to those frail care centers. Awesome. We also have T. She's watching. She says, watching with my five-year-old nephew and 13 year old son so that's awesome not only are the elderly watching young people are watching as well and we want you to know that you are sure. so welcome we love you very much we also have Alec Boyson Hetty and Alec Boyson from Port Elizabeth welcome we have Esther we have Eugene watching from Cape Town we have Benny watching from Durban Pauline Benny. saying that she's 57 we have Jean Modley saying spring chicken laughing faces <laughs> to Pastor Kevin we have James Broadway very faithful we have Salome watching as well. She also said that her mom is turning 91 on Saturday. And we have Josie watching, Debbie watching from Durban. Thank you for letting us know where you are watching from. I believe Amazing. tonight you are going to encounter God. There's no mistake why you're on this channel, why you tuned in tonight. You are Amen. going to encounter God in a real and a radical way in Jesus' name. And I believe breakthrough is going to come in your life Amen. in Jesus' name. You don't Amen. wait for breakthrough. As you press into the Lord, as you read, as you engage in the Word, breakthrough comes. It'll come in every sphere of of your life in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I want I want to just encourage every single one and uh, you know who is considered the elderly in our society. Now the verdict is still out there as to when you actually enter into that particular zone of now being classified as elderly. But I want to encourage you with this. Just as Paul wrote to Timothy and encourage him saying do not let anyone look down upon you, despise you because of your youth. In other words, your young age. So I want to encourage every single one of you, whether I you mean, are 60 plus, <clears throat> 70 plus, <throat> 80 plus, 90 plus, whether you are about to turn 120, it makes no difference. Yeah. Do not let anyone look down upon you. Do not let anyone despise you because of your old age. Mm. As long as there is breath, in your lungs Come on. you it. are alive mm. Thank you, Lord. with oh, purpose, purpose potential and possibility mm. and i pray that even tonight mm. that the lord will speak to you mm. that the lord will that you will truly encounter him yeah. that he will speak to you that you will act upon his word that by faith you will launch out and even right now i, I just feel there's someone even right now you're watching and you are of age and that you are even going to become the oldest person to enroll at Faith GI. Come on. Faith Global Institute. Ooh. Even right now, if, if, if you feel that call of God, like you, you just know, 
You just know, I'm called for the ministry. You might say, I've, I've, I've left it for so long, for, for such a long time. I've always known. Go to the website. Come on. Faithgi.com. That's Faith Global Institute. Faithgi.com. Someone out there had to hear that right now. Mm. You might be 97 years old. I, I, it's like the whole time as I was, as I was, as we were talking about this, it's like I, I just see someone, you are 97 years old. And the Lord is speaking to you. As long as there is breath in your lungs, God is wanting to use you. Come on, yeah. You are not just here, just waiting for your end to come. Mm, that's good. While you have breath in your lungs, you are still someone that the Lord is wanting to use. And mm. He's going to use you in a powerful way. Yes. Whether you are 17 or 97, you can be a powerful instrument in the hand of Almighty God. That's right. So, Father, I just pray your blessing mm. over every single one watching. Regardless of their age, regardless of their background, regardless of the country that they may be residing in right now. Lord, as we anticipate, even right now, your glory, your presence to come. Fill every room. Flood every heart. Mm. I just see so many. You are reaching out in the spirit. I see you reaching out. I'm believing with you tonight that you will get so close that as you reach out, you will touch the very heart of God. That you're going to touch not only the hem of his garment, but that you will even tonight become one with him. Se Get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get ready to encounter His presence. Father, we cry out to You. As Jesus prayed that we will be one as You are one. Tonight we pray that we will become one with You that whatever it is that's been holding us back, that tonight it is removed, tonight it is lifted, so that we may enter in to the fullness of your presence, where there's nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Perfect peace, no fear, no shame, no condemnation, no bondage, no addiction, mm. no sickness, no disease, no illness, no wickedness, no unrighteousness. Only the glory the fullness of His presence. Right there where you are, get ready. As we now worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
起飞，我是。presence of God fill you, saturate you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. In Jesus' name. Even right now, in the very presence Atmosphere of heaven, the glory of God. We command every sickness, every disease, even that which plagues the mind, depression, anxiety, stress, fear. You, Jesus. We cast you out now in Jesus' name. You are no longer welcome. You will never return again in Jesus' name. Right there where you are, just continue just to bask in the presence of the Lord. almost makes you want to just 
lie down and just be in his presence. Mm. You see, it, it, it has to come to the point where you say that there is no place I would rather be right now mm. than in his presence. You see, there are many people who seek the hand of God, but not the heart of God. So what kind of person are you? Have you been seeking His hand? Or have you been truly seeking His heart? It's interesting that even David... A man who was not allowed to build the temple of God because of that which he had done. Yet he is still known as a man after God's own heart. Mm. It shows that regardless of all the things that he had done, and he had made many mistakes, he had sinned multiple times, grievous sin. And yet God calls him a man after his very own heart. Mm. And that is because he loved God. That is because there existed between them a divine friendship. And I pray that you will get to that place even right now. This very evening, this very day, this afternoon, wherever it is that you are watching from. Even right now, just in the presence of the Lord, just repent for those times. Or maybe it has even been up to this point in time where you have been seeking the hand of God instead of the heart of God. Just say, Lord, forgive me for the times that I've made it about myself. Where I've made it about my needs, my desires, what I want. Tonight I lay it all down. I lay down all of my selfishness. And even right now, He allows you to move beyond the veil and enter in to the Holy of Holies. Into that very space where God, the Father, Himself, Reigns. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you did not leave us in darkness, mm. but that you loved us so much mm -hmm. that you gave us your one and only Son. While we were still in sin, you loved us and you gave to us your one and only son so that all of those who will put their faith their hope and their trust in Jesus that they will not perish but that they will have everlasting life so if you've never given your life to Jesus ever before it's not by chance or coincidence that you are watching right now this is your moment to connect with the heart of God. For He so loves you. Maybe it is that you've drifted away and right now you say, I, I haven't experienced what I've just experienced right now in a very long time. Come back to the heart of God. Come back to the heart of worship. And worship Him again in spirit and in truth. Just say this out loud. And believe it with your heart. For the Bible declares that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Say this, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I confess, I confess, I confess that I've sinned against you. Sinned against you. Tonight, I repent Tonight I repent of all of my sin. Of all of my sins. And I ask that you will forgive me. And I ask that you will forgive me. Right here and right now. Right here and right now. I receive. I receive. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and as my Savior, as my Lord and as my Savior, come into my life, 
come into my life. Touch me. Touch me. Change me. Change me. Fill me. Fill me. Set me free. Set me free. And let me never be. Let me never be the same again. The same again. Let me burn for you. Let me burn for you. Give me a passion for the lost. Give me a passion for the lost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 While we are in the very presence of the Lord, I want us just to remain in the atmosphere. And I want you to get your notebooks, if you have it close by, get your Bibles. Because tonight we want to talk to you about the importance of having a supernatural encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mm. You know, that song that we sang so beautifully speaks of this and it says, I need an encounter. Now, to many, they might say, well, I've had an encounter mm. with the Lord. But I want to encourage you that it's not about having an encounter or ha having had an encounter with the Lord. Because there are so many people that they're still running around with oil that's 50 years old, 10 years old. It's not even flowing anymore. It's like grease. I pray that tonight you will truly get into that place where you say, I'm buying fresh oil. I've come into the presence of the Lord to get fresh oil. So it's about having continuous encounters with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Pastor Nikki van der Vestes and once said this, and I love this. He said, an encounter is a supernatural introduction of God to His people. An encounter is a supernatural introduction of God to His people. Now, one of the very interesting things that happen when you have an encounter with God is that you become a carrier of the encounter that you have had with God. That's right. Moses encountered the glory of God. He encountered God, remember, through the burning bush. And as a result, that gave him now the legal right, the authority to become a carrier of the supernatural. And it was following that supernatural encounter that we read about all the plagues that hit Egypt. And we also read about him just stretching forth his staff and the Red Sea parted. And the Israelites walked over, crossed over on dry land. We also read about someone by the name of Simon, who later is referred to as Peter. The book of Acts talks about the fact that he would walk in the streets and people anticipating that Peter would walk on by actually put the sick outside so that the very shadow of Peter would fall upon them and that they would then be healed. Mm. Paul, another example, who was Saul, who encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. He encountered the risen Jesus on what we refer to even now proverbially, but for him physically it was on the road to Damascus, where he encountered the risen Jesus. And it was after that, again, that we read in the book of Acts, that it says, and the Lord did unusual and extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. Now, a miracle in itself is already unusual, and by definition, it is extraordinary. Otherwise, it would not be a miracle. Now, the very fact that the Bible says that Paul did, or the Lord then did through the hands of Paul, unusual and extraordinary miracles. Points to the fact that what he did in the supernatural power of God, or should I rather say through the supernatural power of God, was not common, was not usual, was not your typical day at the office, not your typical day in the mission field. It was unusual and it was extraordinary. So we're going to be delving into the Word of the Lord and we're going to be interacting, we're going to be sharing. And I want you right now, as I said, if you're only tuning in right now, get your Bible, 
get your notebook, get your pen, mm. because we're going to share with you tonight as we're going to share on having an encounter with the Lord. Mm. I'm actually at a loss for words. It's, it's almost one of those holy moments where it feels like you can't even contaminate the presence of God yeah. by just speaking. But we are here to facilitate this time. And as a facilitator, I just want you to know that I want you to make a decision that you are hearing us, you're hearing what we are saying, but you are hearing with your spiritual ears what the Lord is speaking to you specifically. Because I know that tonight He cares so much for every individual, even everyone in this place, for every hungry heart that we will encounter Him. We need encounters with the Lord to be able to move on this earth with power, like Kevin just said, that Paul did. That is the Lord's desire for all of His children, to walk in that identity and purpose. But it comes through an encounter. Otherwise, we are so efficient and eloquent in the Word. The Word. Some of us feel I only need the Word. The Word is, we need that. That's your foundation. But the Word on itself, without the Spirit, leads to religion and the letter then kills so tonight i just sense that there are even some of you who says that you have i've been i've been serving the lord for years years and years but it's the first time that i feel his presence again or maybe you've not been in church in that mm. setting and tonight there's just something where you feel the presence the glory of god come and lay so heavy on you and everything that you thought that tonight i want to just give this and this and this to the lord it all just faded in that moment because all you become aware of is His holiness, His presence. And like Isaiah, when he had that wonderful encounter, we said that he saw the seraphim and they were just saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Because you see, they see things from God's vantage point. They see things from heaven's uh, point of view. And in heaven, I want to say to you this, that Isaiah needed that encounter. Because at that time, just before Isaiah 6, it was the um, King Uzziah that died. And I believe that they were all in turmoil. They were fearing what's going to happen now. The mm. king has physically died. Now he needed that reality. But what he did as a good man of God, and, and I want to say to you, that's what we should do, is he ran to the Father. He ran to God. And he said, what now? And he had that wonderful encounter. And he said, I saw the Lord. And he was seated on his throne. And then his robe filled the place. And I believe that in the midst of the turmoil, we loved the king. He was, he, was, um, he was committed to King Uzziah. And then he died. He needed to see that the Lord is on his throne. Even though things around him didn't look sound, they didn't look like it was reliable anymore. It was unstable. And that might be the place where we find ourselves. If you look around, there's not stability. You look at governments and all of those things. You look at your workplace and it feels to you like, I don't know what the future is going to hold. But that is why God says tonight that I want you to come up to me. Come into my throne room. Like um, Esther, I just see that the king is holding out his scepter. That means he is inviting you into his presence. He's allowing right. you into the secret place. Mm -hmm. And he says to you that come and see that I am on my throne. I am here. That, that gives you that, that peace to know that the end of the book says that we have the victory. And if you have a victory mindset, it changes everything. It changes your perspective because it puts you in a position where you know that I have the right because I've been called to rule and reign. I'm not just a victim. I don't have to have life just happen to me. Pastor Jenny always says life should happen through us and from us. And that can only happen when you have an encounter with the Lord. But as we speak about that, I actually wanted to share an encounter that I had um, with the Lord. And there are many um, and I believe in different seasons, there are different types of encounters that we have. But I, I was saved for a little while after Kevin and I was, uh, got married and I went with my mother-in-law to a ladies conference. And it was wonderful. I mean, there were thousands, probably 5,000 women just all worshipping God. And I've never seen anything like that. And the whole weekend was just word and I got filled and it was amazing. Now for someone who came from a religious background, there was almost so many things that had to be undone. Because even though I uh, read the Bible, it had to become a revelation. And that weekend, I just fed on the Word. It was just a feast. Mm -hmm. And right at the end, that beautiful song of Josh Groban um, was playing of You Raise Me Up. And everyone was just asked to close your eyes. 
And for the first time in my life, it felt like Jesus was literally standing right next to me. And I opened my eyes to see if anyone else could see him. But everyone was just in that place, in that place of reverence. And I heard the Lord say to me that I am going to raise you up. And I'm going to equip you so that you can speak to thousands and thousands of people. And you can impart to them, help them to find their identity and purpose. And you know what? I was almost like Jeremiah at that point. Where I said, no, Lord. I can't speak because if you know my background, I was so afraid of speaking to anybody. Couldn't do it. Now I can do all things through Christ Jesus. But when he gave me that, I felt like, how can this be? How can this be? But immediately in my limited mind, when it comes to scriptures, that scripture came up to say that I pull down every stronghold, everything that raised itself above the knowledge of God. And I just knew that I had to hold on to that. And it was such a precious moment. And even though in myself, I knew there's nothing that I can do to work this thing. It's too big for me. I cannot do it in myself. But I knew that when God spoke, that I wanted to say like Mary did. When the angel encountered her, you remember when he said, you're going to be carrying Jesus, etc. She just said, let it be done as you have spoken. And that is what I want you to take tonight. To just when you encounter him like that and many times encounters will first maybe be to heal you because god comes and he heals us from from past things or gives us that identity and and purpose etc but when he gives you a great big thing that he says that he is going to equip you to do for him don't say let us not be those who say no lord please not me i think even of moses how many times he actually begged god no please i can't i can't but when God gives you a larger than life vision, know that he will establish it, but then you seek him with everything in you. I'm actually so excited to, to have um, some of you just share, if you can type it out, maybe when was your last encounter or when was a really pivotal point in your life where you know you encountered the Lord and he changed everything, the whole direction that your life was going into. I mean, I'm even thinking just about Titch behind the drums and everyone here, massive encounters because we're all sitting here, normal people, normal people that had sinful lives, but God encountered us from place of desperacy, and then he changes everything around. Amen. So if you can type out in the comment section, if, there's, if you can type it out, email us, just even quicken that inside of yourself, yeah. because many times it's important to remember your encounters with God. Mm. Then you see again how mm. far you have come. Amen. Because our yeah. human mind is something that wants to tend to forget what God has done in our lives. But let tonight be that night where you rekindle that flame and then you say, Lord, I don't want to hold on. Like Kevin said, now, I can't move forward with that old flame. I need you tonight. Amen. 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 You know, the word says this, and Pastor Sully reminded me of this here. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, it says this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. To have an encounter with God, you have to mm. hunger for That's it. Right. That's you good. have to thirst for it. Think of an athlete who's been training. He has to eat He has to eat properly to be able to be well-nourished, mm. nutrition. But at the end of a, a long day of training, you're going to be thirsty. You're going to have to drink to fill your body mm. with nutrition and liquids to keep going for the next day. Same thing with having an encounter. You desiring an encounter? You want to have another encounter with the Lord? You have to. You have to hunger and thirst for an encounter with God. And the word says, when you hunger, when you thirst, you will be mm. filled. God's desire is for you to encounter Him. Encounter Him on a daily basis. Not just an encounter Him on a Sunday. Encounter Him at a midweek meeting or at a conference if you attend conferences. God wants you to encounter Him daily. And this reminds me of a time also... I love to share personal stories and posh on so I love it when you, you know, went out the starting box over there. You know, I, I remember a time, you know, I used to be pretty insecure and um, I got to a place where I was very lonely. And loneliness is not a lack of company. Loneliness is a lack of purpose. I mean. And mm. you have to find That's that good. purpose in the encounter. Come That's on, where it's found. And, you know, I remember coming to this ministry. I was a Baptist boy before this. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I had a lot of words spoken over my life when I first came here. 
And it was through encounters where the transformation happened. The life of any faithful believer, any Holy, Holy Ghost believer, mm -hmm. the life of a Christian is transformation. Mm -hmm. And that happens in an encounter. And I remember, um, you know, I lost my best friend at the age of seven years old. Uh, he fell off a wall playing outside in the backyard and uh, in the hospital, he fell off his hospital bed and he was, he was brain dead and he passed away. So I became very lonely at the age of seven and at the age of 13, going into high school, I lost my second best friend, going on 19 years now, and uh, he died in a horrific bus accident um, mm -hmm. on a sporting tour. Then I lost, so again, carrying this loneliness into high school, I lost my third best friend after high school who passed away of leukemia. But through all this time of loneliness, I never had this relationship with the Lord. I never knew of encounters. I never knew that there was a supernatural God who could heal people, who could set people free, who was there to save and, and to find people who are lost and to bring them into a home, into a family. And so when I had this encounter with the Lord, He told me this, is that Jesus, this is what He said, Jesus will stick closer than a brother. Amen. And what He did was He called me in. Mm. He said, you are my son. Mm. And that's what the Lord's saying tonight. If you have felt lonely, maybe if you felt rejected or neglected, or maybe you felt like you're a failure or you've never amounted to anything, you felt like you've never, you're not good enough, we have to get into that place of having an encounter with God. That encounter will bring transformation. That encounter will bring change. But it all starts with hunger and thirst. You have to be hungry. You have to be thirsty. And I remember this uh, past weekend, we took Samuel, our son, out into one of the play areas here um, in, in town. And he loves slides. And for him to encounter the slide first, I had to go with him. So I went down the slide with him, and we went to a bigger slide and a bigger slide. And eventually, he, we got to one of the bigger slides on the playground. And what he did was, he pushed me aside. Normally, he would say, Dada, Dada, come, or Mama, Mama. Because once he's experienced it, he wants you to experience it with him. But this big slide, he pushed me aside. He said, Dada, push me aside. And he went down all by himself on the big slide. And the Lord spoke to me through this year. And he said, you know, as Pastor Kevin said, we have to be a carrier of that encounter. What Samuel kept calling us back for was, Dada, Dada, come. Dada, Dada, come. Or Mama, Mama, come. He wanted us to experience that which he encountered. That which you have encountered, you have to be That's a carrier good. of for others to experience. Mm, if you've encountered the Lord as Jehovah Jireh, as, he, as your provider, you have to carry that. Be a carrier of that encounter for others to encounter Him as Jehovah Jireh, their provider. You know, this taught me something. Being as young as two years and three months, Samuel, as small as he was, wanting to go after the biggest slide in the playground. It taught me that God is raising up a generation, a generation that are hungry and thirsty for greater things, a generation that will be bold in their faith, fierce in their faith. And that's what it's truly about, getting into that place, being hungry, being thirsty for more of God, having an encounter with Him where it will bring change. Amen. Amen. You know, I really felt the Lord prompt me to share this. I wasn't going to go this direction at first, but I really feel to share this with you. You know, this past week, someone very dear to me passed away and she was always so full of life, a vibrant person. I mean, she could make me laugh until I cried. Um, extremely creative. She, the best painter I know, the most amazing woman. If there was a creative woman, that was it. She was amazing. But something awesome is she loved Jesus and she had numerous encounters with the Lord. And that's what I loved how Pastor Kevin started off. He, he showed you, he said, do you want to give your heart to Jesus? Because yeah. that's where it all starts. Mm, that's amen. the foundation. That's right. And that's very important to really encounter the Lord. And the important thing is that we don't just know God in our heads, but we mm. truly know Him. Mm. That's why you'll see sometimes um, students will go off to varsity or they'll leave home and then they'll get involved in various things. Why is that? And they'll kind of leave the faith. Why is that? They haven't had an encounter with the Lord. They know Him with, the, with their head, but they don't truly know Him. So our prayer is that tonight you would encounter the Lord and not only you, that your family members, mm. those that aren't saved, yeah. that they would truly encounter the Lord friends that you know, people that you know, that they would encounter the Lord. In um, 
And I also wanted to say this, the Holy Spirit really prompted me to say this, that an encounter is not just for young people. It is also for older people. It's yes. for yes. all ages. Amen. So mm. if you're an older person, 70, 80 year old, 90 year old, it doesn't exclude you at all. It includes you. Praise God. The best days are ahead of you. So I want you to know from the get-go that an encounter doesn't exclude you because of your age. If you will press in, just like Brad said, if you will hunger, if you will thirst after the Lord, you will have have an encounter with God and it will transform your life. An encounter is an event or an experience with God in which there's a supernatural manifestation of God's presence in your life. It's out of the ordinary. It's often marked out by some kind of physical sense of the presence of God. So this is what I really want to get to, that an encounter is an experience, number mm. one. An encounter, number two, is face to face. With who? With God. That's and right. number three, an encounter goes beyond your head knowledge. It is an experience with the Lord. It is face to face with God Himself. And that is what truly changes your life. You go from maybe being religious or kind of being lukewarm for the Lord. And when you have an encounter with the Lord, it makes you red hot on fire for God right. in Jesus' name. You know, as you live your life, it's likely that you will come face to face with, face to face with all different kinds of people on different spiritual levels. Yeah. People who maybe actively pursue Jesus, then people who recently committed their life, people who are nonchalant, people who are religious, people who are lost and don't know Christ. So we encounter various people. But the aim is that every single person would encounter Jesus for who He is, that they would experience His true character because that is what transforms our hearts. Inside, sometimes we can carry this bitterness or all of these things with us. But when you encounter the Lord, God really deals with your heart and the depth of who you are. He goes where no doctor can go mm. and He will heal the broken heart. He sets you free in those encounters. You know, in, in the Word of God, Simon Peter had encountered Jesus numerous times before his life was changed. And people may have various encounters with the Lord before their life actually radically changes. That's right. In John 1.36, it says, The day after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus was walking nearby and John exclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God. In verse 37 to 40, it relates that those two men that heard John, the one who was Andrew, whose brother was Simon Peter. Isn't that amazing? That Simon Peter's first encounter was actually information that he heard from his brother Andrew. And at this point, Simon had never actually personally met with Jesus. All he knew was that his brother had told him that we have found the Messiah. So some people have heard about Jesus from their friends and from their family, yeah. but they've never personally yeah. met him. Yeah, mm. right. They've never personally met him. And our goal is that we would personally meet Jesus and that for our friends and family to personally meet him yeah. because they've heard about him through us, through us telling him, but now they have to personally meet him. And in Acts 9 verse 1 to 22 in the Passion Translation, um, I'll summarize it. Basically, we see how God became a total reality in Saul's life once he had encountered God on the road to Damascus. So encounters are all shapes and forms, but the main point is that an encounter is an experience with God. An encounter is face to face with God. An encounter goes beyond your head knowledge. Yeah. An encounter with God is, is not a once off event. I love what Pastor Kevin said because it's not a once off event, it's continual. We should continue. You could sit there to, tonight, today, wherever you're watching from, saying, I've had my encounter with the Lord, you know, I'm all cool. <laughs> no, it's, it's a continual event. We have to continually seek in the Lord to have a fresh encounter with Him. So it's not a once-off event. The purpose of an encounter, this is very important. Number one, there's many different purposes for an encounter, but I'm just going to touch on two. Number one, it's for your faith to be founded on the power of God and not the wisdom of man. I want to read that again. For your faith to be founded on the power of God and not the wisdom of man. And number two, for God to become a total reality in your life for God to become a total reality in your life. You know, an encounter with God transforms you from within. It transforms your heart within. And I know that's exactly what the Lord did for me. There's many people in the Bible who had an encounter mm. with the Lord. And I know that Pastor Kevin has touched on this and I know that he will, but there's a few people that had an encounter with the Lord that just comes to mind is Moses, Gideon, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jonah, Paul. There are various people in the Bible who encountered 
God. There's nothing like encountering His love. And I know in my own yeah. life, if I can bring this together with an encounter that I had in my life, is I was at Days of Glory and my personality was, I was actually very shy back then. I couldn't say peekaboo to a friend. I was very reserved. I was very introverted, believe it or not. I was very <laughs> introverted. And I remember looking around, I could see that, you know, people were encountering the Lord over the week or however long it was. I think it was 50 days, yes. And um, I could see this, but I was like, you know, that's not my personality. For me, I wasn't going to make a show of myself. That was not in me at all. Until the one night, I got desperate for the Lord. I got hungry. I wasn't so sure of this, about this whole encounter, but I was hungry and desperate for the Lord. I wanted what God had for my life. And I remember that particular night, I gave a sacrificial seed. And I know, this, you know, that night I pressed into the Lord. I was hungering, hunger, I hungered after the Lord, should I say hungering, hungered after the Lord. And that night I encountered God in such a real way, mm -hmm. man, oh man. Back then, Brad, um, we were just courting at the time. We were getting to know each other. And I encountered the Lord. I remember not being even being able to say goodbye to our friends that were leaving, going back to Limpopo and all over. And that was the last night. And I encountered God in such a real way. Man, I was crying. I was laughing. It was totally out of character for me. But I was encountering the Lord. And the things that the Lord told me was incredible. And I remember even um, Brad even told me that, I mean, they started putting off the lights. I was still <laughs> encountering the Lord. Eventually, Brad literally had to carry me out this building. I was, it was totally not me at all. He, he carried me out the building and he had to drive me home that night and I encountered the Lord. That lingered on me for three days and there were three monumental things that happened in those three days. I encountered the Lord in such a real way and I want to encourage you that God's no respect of person. That's right. What He did for me, He can sure do for you. I'm not like I'm anything special. He can do it for you. If you would just hunger and get desperate after the Lord, you can encounter Him. And that for me stuck with me. It marked my life. It transformed me on the inside for three days that I was encountering the Lord in such a a real way for Brad to carry me out this building you know I was having an encounter because it was not like my personality I was shy I was reserved I wouldn't want to make a scene make a spectacle be in the public eye at all but I encountered the Lord and so too you can encounter the Lord in a real real way and another story I want to share is um, Brad and I we had a youth meeting back then we were also courting and it was the last youth meeting of the year and um, I remember Pastor Alex and Lauren anyway they called us to the front and laid hands on us we encountered the Lord in such a real way that by the time that we came around the party was over the pizza was gone the food was gone but it didn't matter because we had encountered the Lord the Lord spoke to us individually at, in that night like never before and that marked us it set us up for our future it set us up for victory so i really want to encourage you it doesn't matter how long you've been a christian or That's what right. age you are you can encounter the lord you can have a face-to-face -face time with the lord you can be you can have that intimate time with the lord and That's it right. will transform you on the inside because sometimes it's the small things even in our hearts yes. i remember reading about a study they did a, a blister study I won't go into the whole study, but basically what happened was they took couples and they put them in different rooms and they said that they needed to argue and they had blisters. And what happened was they were arguing and then they came back three weeks later and the people whose blisters had healed and that they were well, they were rejuvenated, were the people that actually came to a resolution. Maybe they didn't quite agree, but they came to a resolution in that argument. So it just showed me there again that we sometimes it's those small unresolved things amongst people right. or maybe with your spouse or your child or a co-worker or whatever it may be that can actually, it can hinder you. It can hinder you on the inside. It can hinder your heart from, you know, being transformed. It can hinder your life. It can completely stop what God wants to do in your life. But the Lord wants to do something new in your life. He Come wants on. to transform you from the inside yeah. out. How does He do that? He transforms your heart by encountering you. But it just takes you saying, God, I'm ready. God, I'm desperate. I'm hungry for you. I want more of you. And you sure will have an encounter with the Lord. Come on.
ground. Amen. Amen. You know what, as we still here, right here on, on set in the studio, it's like we can just still feel the very presence mm. of God. The Lord is in this place. It's, it's almost like Jesus is sitting right mm. here next to him. And that is the beauty of creating an atmosphere mm. where he is welcome. And even as I'm listening to all the incredible stories and testimonies of my co-hosts tonight as, as they openly share about the incredible encounters that they've had with the Lord. You know, there's many encounters that I've had with the Lord over the years. Mm -hmm. And even just as I'm thinking about them even now, it occurred to me that more than 90% of all the encounters that I've had with the Lord happened right here. And I'm talking about right here in this particular building that we are in right now and I want to encourage you that if it is that you have been touched by the Lord in a supernatural way there's something that the Lord did for you in a powerful way during the 50 days of glory that I know has been a pivotal mm. moment in time for many even myself and Chantel this is uh, back in, uh, in, in July, it was the 7th of July, 2009. I can tell you exactly the date and the time. It was just before midnight that night that Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, who was uh, being hosted here by Pastor Andre and Jenny, that he came and that he asked for those who would like to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and who would like to receive the fire of God to, to line up. And I know, you know, we were coming out of a religious background. I mean, Chantal and I both came from the Dutch Reformed church background. And, um, you know, growing up Afrikaans, very conservative. In an, I was brought up in an extremely conservative home where everything that is of the spirit or considered what we would today classify or put under the umbrella of Pentecostal, charismatic, that to me and my particular mindset and worldview at the time was is anything under that umbrella is of the devil <laughs> yet I had a desire an absolute desire to encounter God and then this was when I discovered that religion does not give you the opportunity to encounter God religion is man's attempt to satisfy God to get God's attention which is why if you look at religions all around the world, it involves rituals, it, it, it involves practices, certain things that have to be done to invoke or with the idea that it would invoke this particular deity to act on your behalf. That's religion. It's man reaching out to God, but God himself, the father of light, he is the one who reaches out to us who loved us so much, as we said earlier, that while we were still in sin, He gave us His one and only Son. Mm. You know, the Lord just has a way of just flipping the tables, just mm. changing the way in which we would sort of think of in our human mind and our human nature, how God would act and how He should react, and then He does it the complete opposite way. And then the Lord just came and just did a radical work in, in my heart and Chantel's heart and a week thereafter, we, we even brought our parents. Now keep in mind, these were individuals that were, you know, there was a, mm -hmm. a real reverent couple. Okay? Sure. They were in a particular religious yeah. setting. And what is so interesting is that a week later, we, we had them here in, in, this was also now the, the 14th of July, 2009. We brought them. We were in a small town by the name of Somerset East and we drove through and uh, there's a whole story about how we even came and uh, it, it, it's quite interesting and funny. We, I actually bought, um, hired a taxi, a, a real taxi with a taxi driver because there were no of bus course. services and I wanted to bring <laughs> as many people as possible because I actually came with this whole idea because if I said to my parents, I'm driving through, come with me, I knew that they were not going to come. So what I did was is I just got a taxi, I filled the taxi with whoever wanted to go, I sponsored everyone who would just come. So I could say to my parents, hey, I've got, uh, it just so happens that I've got two <laughs> seats left. Would you like to come? And uh, to cut a long story short, beyond belief almost, 
they actually decided that they were going to come. And uh, here they were, and that first night, Dr. Rodney has a word of knowledge and acts upon it, calls us all to the front, all of us representing the small town by the name of Somerset East here in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. And then he asks us to hold hands and he just prays, releases the, the fire of God powerfully over us as a group. And so it is that afterward I had a look at the video and so it is that all of us fall under the power of God, under the anointing, except my parents. I know this is their story to tell, but what I want to get to is this. Dr. Rodney comes to my father, steps to, up to him and says to him, again, acting on a word of knowledge. I mean, he doesn't know us at all at that stage. Mm -hmm. And he says to him, Duomni. Now, he didn't know he was a reverend. He says to him, Duomni. And he, he actually spoke Afrikaans to him. So yeah, wow. th th that was also a, a very interesting. Yeah. You know, Dr. <laughs> Rodney Brown speaking Afrikaans to my father, who's also Afrikaans. But translated into English, he was saying to him, Reverend, it's not here, it's here. Mm. Yeah. Sure. And then That's he good. said, from your innermost being, again, speaking Afrikaans, but he was saying, translated into English, from your innermost being mm. Mm. will come streams of living water. And that touched me in such a powerful way. Watching that then later on, on a video, on a DVD. Mm. Because if God would go to such an extreme length, he wow. could say, to touch people who have never ever had an encounter with the Lord. Yeah, my, my, my parents were, and as I would say, you know, they were, they were sort of curious, more curious than really hungry. Curious, but still somewhat skeptical. But it was only then in that moment that they released, that they opened up, that it allowed the Spirit of God to just come in. And the Lord came in with His fullness. And a week later, they already testified. Mm -hmm. within, within days of going back to their church, already there was the outbreak of signs, wonders, and miracles. Come because on. you've become a carrier That's right. of mm -hmm. the encounter that you've had. Mm -hmm. Now, both Chantal and Jazan were highlighting Isaiah's encounter. Now, I'm not going to read all of the scripture, but if I may, just for a moment, just highlight four key points from Isaiah's encounter. And this you can find in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1 to 8. So you can write it down, you can go and read it. But I'm sure many of you are familiar with this portion of, uh, of Scripture. Number one, it reveals in verse 1 that Isaiah encountered God's glory. Now I don't have time to really delve into the fullness of this particular revelation, but John chapter 12 and verse 41 actually says, and this is powerful, that it was actually... Jesus, whom Isaiah had encountered. John chapter 12 reveals that he saw Jesus and that he spoke of his glory, which he beheld. And uh, what is so powerful about this is the very fact that we can encounter the glory of God and that Hebrews 1 verse 3 declares that Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God. And then number two is that Verse 5 reveals that he felt unworthy. Mm. He said, woe unto me, for I'm a sinful man. Mm. You see, this is what typically happens whenever, the, whenever people in general enter into the atmosphere of heaven. You know, you're at, a, you're at a conference, you're at a church meeting. Even now, as you were watching this, you know, you could even see and you can feel that people all around the world that are watching this broadcast are stepping into the glory are so close, they can really just reach out and touch the heart of God. And immediately in that moment, it's like that sense of, I feel unworthy. Just, it, it's like it, it just bubbles up from within you. I feel unworthy. And that is the natural response of human beings. It's exactly the same kind of response that we read about that Simon had. Remember after Jesus had performed that stunning miracle where he said to him, you know, let's go out for a haul Cast your net on the other side, remember that? And then when all of this was happening, you know, Simon was excited. He was beside himself, overjoyed as to this great catch of fish. So much so that his boat and the boats of his partners were all at the point of sinking. And then as he was busy rejoicing, all of a sudden, you know, I believe what, what he, he saw Jesus. And then in that moment, it's interesting that the Bible declares 
that Simon then said to Jesus, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And it again just shows that that is the default response to people entering into the presence of God. Woe unto me, for I am a sinful man. Which brings me to point number three, is that Isaiah received God's cleansing. During this encounter that Isaiah had, an angel took a coal from the altar and placed it upon his lips. And what is so powerful about this is, is, is exactly this. The fact that if we now know that under an old covenant, an angel taking a coal with tongs from that altar and puts it upon his lips and says, Behold, you have now received clean lips. You are now of use. You are now able to be of service to the mm -hmm. Lord. If that could happen under an old covenant, can you truly understand what happened, what took place when Jesus entered into that holy place once and for all? The veil was torn so that we can enter in. It was always God's desire to cover us. Even after Adam and Eve had sinned, remember what happened? They hid. They hid away. And now while it is true, you hear something that you can write down. While it is true that sin separates us from God, mm. I've discovered that it is guilt, shame, shame, condemnation that prevents people or that is the greatest debilitator to people encountering God. Mm -hmm. That's right. While yes. sin separates us from God, Shame, guilt, condemnation, those three things are what is the greatest debilitator to having an encounter with God. But yet, despite all of that, God then slays an animal, takes that skin and covers them. They had attempted to make clothes out of leaves. I mean, just think about that. <laughs> it would only be a few hours or maybe a few days, if you're lucky, a few days that it would last. So God looks at a temporary fix and maybe laughs, maybe smiles. Like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? What is this going to do? As though this will work. And then God actually has to slay an animal. God is the first one who had to kill something in the Bible. And again, that is a sign of God having to one day give His Son, slay His Son, so that we can be covered with His righteousness. And even right now, I want you to get the cup. I want you to get the bread. I want you to get the bread and I want you to get the cup. As we just reflect on that particular point. And then there's one more point, point number four. The point number three is, is that he received God's cleansing. Now, moments ago, we led you in what is referred to as the sinner's prayer, the salvation prayer. But I want you to really understand that these elements represent the very fact that your old life has died with Christ. As we identify with His death, we too now identify with His life. That as He is, so we are in this world. So take this bread and let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for this bread, a symbol of the body of Christ that was given for us. Just as that angel took a coal from the altar, so we reflect even on this piece of bread this evening that as we partake of it, that it just again affirms the fact that we have been cleansed, that Jesus has through His death, by giving up His body for us, that He has cleansed us from all unrighteousness, that we have been set free from the curse of the Lord by Him having become a curse for us, 
for it is written, Cursed is anyone who is hung on a tree. Whereas it should have been us, crucified, naked, hung on a pole. Jesus bore my shame, my guilt, my condemnation, so that I can now boldly enter in to your presence. You may partake. the cup. Father, we thank you for this cup. The cup of the new covenant that Jesus took that night that he was betrayed and he said, do this in remembrance of me. We thank you that we have access to a better covenant based on better promises. That we have become citizens, partakers of the kingdom of God. That we are carriers of the supernatural. Carriers of the encounter that we have had with you. Use us for the advancing of your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name, you may partake. Hallelujah. Point number four in Isaiah's encounter is that he responded to God's call. That's in verse eight. The only response that we can have after God calls us. Remember, God says, whom shall I send? Mm. And then he said, here I am, mm. Yeah. Mm. send me. It is so important that after you've had an encounter with the Lord, whether as Jehovah Rapha, whether as Jehovah Jireh, whatever it is that you have encountered him in, that you will become a carrier of that encounter that you will become a messenger telling all of the world of the fact that He is a good, good Father mm. to show all the world, look what the Lord has done. Amazing. Amazing. If I can share in Deuteronomy 30 verse 6, it says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that you may live. That's exactly what happens in encounter. Mm. The Lord circumcises your heart. Maybe you haven't been feeling lately. You, you, are, you haven't cried lately. You haven't laughed lately. You know, all of those things, you, you're not sensitive to what the Holy Spirit's doing. Mm. The Lord, when you have an encounter, He circumcises your heart so that you can feel again, that you can laugh again, that you can cry again. All of those things, because that's very important. So that's exactly what the Lord does. He circumcises your heart. He cleanses you. He purifies you in that encounter with Him. And you know, many of my encounters I had right in church that's why it's so important that you get plugged into a local church that you go to the local church that you serve that you get plugged in wherever you are that you make it a priority in your life that on a sunday you are going to your local church because that's where majority of the encounters that i've had has happened but i've also had encounters right on the bathroom floor i've also had encounters right in my room it's not limited to a specific place or a specific venue but it is when you get hungry for the Lord, when you get desperate for the Lord. And I remember those encounters, even on the bathroom floor, as I would sob before the Lord and God would say, Jazan, I've called you. Jazan, I love you. Jazan, I've given you this message. Preach, my girl, preach. And he would, he would speak to me right there on the bathroom floor as I was crying out or I was encountering the Lord. And remember my personality, who I was back then, I was shy, I couldn't speak, I, I didn't dream I'd speak on a stage, speak to anyone, I couldn't even speak to the person next to me, let alone anything else, but God did a work in me, and it all started with having that encounter with the Lord, so, so too, just like I said earlier, God's no respecter of persons, what He did for us, every single person on this panel, He can do for Amen. you, and remember that an encounter is not just a once-off event, but it is That's a right. continual thing, continual face to face time with the Lord. You know, Pastor Kevin, it reminds me, if I may share this yeah. here, it reminds me of, I was coaching um, a, a sports team at one stage, and I invited these guys to come to oh, church. Lord. I invited them to come to church, and you know, 
with the sports team, you have quite a few of them. And uh, there was a large group. I invited them to come to, to church. And they all wore their um, hoodies that we had yeah. made. It was so cool to see them all, all stand out there um, and in the crowd. But the person speaking that night made a call for those to encounter the Lord, to receive the fire of God, to receive the Holy Ghost. And you know, one guy in particular um, who was in this team of mine, uh, he was the vice captain and then later became the captain. He kept saying, you know, this church thing, I, I mean, mm. I, he's never been to church. He was like, you know, you see people fall down under the power of God. You see people <laughs> weep, you see people laugh, you see people cry. Um, and he said this, he said, you know, um, Brad, this, this guy's not going to push me down. He's not going to push <laughs> me over. And he was a tough guy. I mean, he was well built. I mean, he, he's a sportsman. And uh, so he went to the front and the pastor prayed for all the guys and he prayed for everybody who responded to the line. And uh, this particular guy, I mean, he, he's even his stance was like standing forward. Like, you know, the, you're not going to push me over. Thinking it's the man of God that pushes you over, you know. And the man simply stood back, the preacher that night, and all he did was speak a word over his life. And he raised his hands up like this. And he said that you thought that I'm going to push you over. Watch how you'll encounter the Lord. And as he prayed, this man fell under the power of God. This vice captain of mine fell under the power of God. And that night he encountered the Lord. Amen. Do you know that today he is a professional cricketer playing in the UK and he's working in an old age home, a frail care center, working, serving others. This is what became real to him. Once he encountered the Lord, he became hungry and thirsty. Remember I spoke to you about that earlier on in the evening? I want to bring you back to that scripture. It says this, the Lord would bless you those who have an appetite for God. Oh, you want to be blessed? Beautiful. You have to have an appetite for God. That's in the message translation, Matthew 5 verse 6 in the message. In the Passion Translation, it says this, How enriched you are when you crave the Word. The Lord wants you to be blessed. The Lord wants you to be enriched. The, Lord, the Word also says this here, is that you would be completely satisfied, well nourished. You want to be satisfied? You want to be well nourished? You have to crave the Word of God. You have to get an appetite for the Word of God to desire that encounter. You know, this reminds me of the story of that demon-possessed man in the Bible. Yeah. When Jesus got off the boat and he stood on the land, this man came running to the feet of Jesus. He had an encounter with the Lord right there. This man who had an encounter, I mean, there was a legion of demons inside of him. And, you know, the Lord cast them out into the swine and the swine ran down the hill. And But this man, what happened to him? He had an encounter. There was a change. There was a transformation that only happened by coming to the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. His life became nourished. His life became enriched. And, you know, this blessed me. When you read the last part of this in the story, it says this here. The man came running to Jesus saying, you know, I want to go with you. Wherever you go, I want to do what you're doing. I, I want to follow you. And Jesus said this to the man. Go home. Tell your friends of the great things that I have told you that the Lord has done for you because the Lord has had mm -hmm. compassion on you. Amen. Those of you who have experienced and encountered the Lord, that you've had that appetite for the Lord and your life has been enriched, you have been, that craving has been satisfied. There's only one thing that can fill the void. It's an encounter with the Lord. And he, the Lord commissioned this man, this demon-possessed man, to go and tell his friends and family. I want you to go and testify of what the Lord has done for you. You've got a testimony of how you encountered the Lord. I want you to go and testify. Tell others about what the Lord has done. Testify of the goodness and faithfulness of God so that others can encounter Him too. Mm. Can I say something? Go I see Jezanne's burning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go for it. It's so amazing. I was thinking now while you were speaking, Brad, about Exodus chapter 33, where Moses got this commission that he has to lead these people. But he has encountered God on the mountaintop. The other people didn't. And then what I love here is in verse 13 of Exodus 33, he says here, If it's true that you look favorably upon me, Lord, then let me know your way so that I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor and remember that this nation is your very own people. Mm -hmm. But then he says there that then God says to him that I will personally go with you. And Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Because very importantly, he says this, for your presence among us mm -hmm. sets your people and me apart from all the other people on the earth. If you think about it, remember Moses got the law. 
He went up, got the law, saw the people sinning, threw down the tablets, etc. Then God again gave him the law. So he had the law. And in such the same way, anyone can pick up the Bible. Anyone from any walk of life, any religion, they can come out of curiosity, open up this word, read it like I did once upon a time. And it was just words upon paper. I couldn't understand what was going on there. But the Spirit of God, this is what he says here, your presence among, that's the Spirit of God that sets us apart from people. That is the light that so shines into the world. That is what sets you apart and sets you ablaze as you want to go out and tell friends and family and colleagues, etc. You know what? It's always been God's heart intent mm. to dwell with, to hang out with His beloved. That's right. He's very social. He loves to be with us. And what I just, I said to the team earlier, I was standing in a queue today and I just realized how, um, how, unsocial we have all become we are so connected on social media but in person people aren't connecting anymore people don't even know how to just make that connection anymore but that's not God tonight he comes if you may be feeling lonely like Brad said initially that loneliness is not a lack of friends mm. it's a lack of purpose and identity you that's haven't right. met with the one the creator the one who knows you by name the one who called you on this earth with a purpose and you know what, tonight, if you're just hungry and desperate for Him, even after this broadcast, you can put up some worship music. You can, you can set the tone for the Spirit of God to be welcome. And you can say, like Jacob did, I'm not leaving this place until you bless me. I'm not leaving this place until I encounter you. Mm. And He will show up. And many times you will feel His presence. The glory of God is always... Um, it's, it's visible. There's things happening. In the Bible, there was fire and lightning. There was the mighty rushing wind. There was the tongues like, uh, that, like fire that came upon the disciples in the upper room. Um, and what I loved is I read about the, the scripture which says that God walked with Abra um, Abraham, with Adam in the cool of the day. Now that word for the cool, cool is ravach in Hebrew. And it's the same word as the wind. So it actually says there that God walked with Adam in the wind, in the wind of God. It's that same in Acts 2. It was that same. Suddenly, the sound of heaven like a mighty rushing wind came in. So it's the presence of God, actually. It's the presence of God that shows up when you are desperate and hungry for Him. You might say, why does God want to show up, to show off to people? Why does He do that? He doesn't show off. He just shows up. And when the living God shows up in the natural realm, then things start happening. People start changing. Things start happening. Your purpose is just ignited and everything around you changes. And then I just feel like, I'm going to end off in a minute, but I feel like there are some people, and I know all of us have spoken about Saul and Paul and the encounter, and you know about that. But I believe that there are some of you tonight, maybe like that rugby player or hockey player, whatever he was, it says, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And you know what? For, for Saul, I believe, he was a learned man. He knew the scriptures. Um, he was actually just the most unlikely to be saved because he was such an intellectual. And it says in the word that everything of the spirit is foolishness unto the flesh. That's why you can't fathom the greatness of God just with your mind. Because you want to throw the miraculous out. You want to throw everything that's supernatural out of the door. So God, because he had a purpose for Saul, he knew from the beginning of time that he wanted him to be Paul, the one who will do great exploits. But he had to encounter him. Because I believe that mere talking to, to Saul about the love of Jesus, that was not moving him at all. So he had to have a mighty encounter with God. And those of you tonight, I want to encourage you. Because yesterday I was reminded of the first encounter that I had with God. My life was going on the wrong direction very fast. And then one day I found myself where I was in a massive accident and I just knew that this will be the end. And I called out to Jesus. You know what? It wasn't calling out to Him from a relationship point of view. It was calling out in desperacy because somehow I knew that there was a name above all names that can save me. And He did come with His strong right hand. And He captured me and He changed my life. But I want to say to you tonight, that was not God's fault, the accident and all of those things. That is the effect of our sinful lifestyles. That is the things that we do when we run with the, after the lights on the highways and after everything that's flashy, that's not Him. 
But I want to say to you, don't let your life get to a point where you have to call out to him in desperacy to come and save your life. No, go closer to him right now when you have the time. Today, when you hear his voice, lift up your hands and say, here I am, Lord. I am so desperate for you. I want to encounter you. I want to have what all of these people have been speaking about. And I want to say to you today, the 22nd of April can just be that day for you that everything in your life changes. That's really my heart's prayer for every one of you. Amen. You know, in Romans 8, 14, it says this in the King James Version. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. This is so key because when you have an encounter with the Lord and it transforms your life, you are going to be led by the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a divine leading. Yeah. And something that I've come to learn and I'm still learning is that you can have natural wisdom or you can have wisdom that you've acquired from reading and all these things. But there's nothing like supernatural wisdom. And when you have an encounter with the Lord, you get super supernatural wisdom and it's often in those encounters with the Lord that the Lord will speak to you that the Holy Spirit will give you direction will speak to you concerning your life speak to you what you should do and all those things that's why it is so important that we have an encounter with the Lord because that will give you divine leading it will give you divine direction for your life and I remember listening to a preacher once and him sharing a story and he was saying that the Lord really showed him that him and his family were to buy a specific house. But they weren't really sure of this house in the natural, it didn't look super great. But the Lord really spoke to him and said that I want you to buy this house because there's treasure there. You see, he would have never known that by human intellect, by hmm. natural wisdom, by acquired wisdom, because according to the paper, it didn't look great. But according to the Lord, he said that and he followed that leading. He had an encounter with the Lord where the Lord showed him that he needed to buy this house because there was treasure. Eventually, actually, he, he says he sends out his sons. They acquired the property. He sends out his sons with all these metal detectors and literally all over all this acres and acres of land. And they found nothing. They did it again and again. And eventually they thought, OK, you know, maybe I didn't hear the Lord right. But anyway, we've acquired this property. Years later, they found multiple gas wells on this property. And I'm telling you, companies started to buy this gas and they are extremely wealthy today because they listened to the voice of God. Amen. And he had an encounter with the Lord. He got divine leading and it changed the shape of his life. It changed the course of his very life. And I know even with Brad and I, there were many times, many, many times it looked great on paper many times and we weighed up different things we looked at different things we are go-getters we are people of action we want to do that and the lord said no i don't want you to do that and the lord clearly spoke to us that we should not do that and praise god we followed the leading of the holy spirit Amen. and it's from that encounter we actually heard the lord's voice very clearly in an encounter with the lord so to you if you're facing different things if you need to make a certain decision concerning business family whatever it may be have an encounter with the lord get quiet in his presence seek his face and he will give you that divine leading he will give you that direction in jesus name you know, speaking about faith and speaking about an encounter, I want to share this here with you very quickly and very briefly. Hebrews 11 one says this, is that now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed. It's the foundation for us needed, listen carefully, to acquire the things we long for. We have to have an encounter with the Lord to be able to take our faith to another level. But listen to this latter part in Hebrews 11 one. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. You see, our journey of faith is a walk. It's not a walk of sight. It's a walk of faith. We don't live by what we see. And this is what the Lord said to me. He says that I have good things in store for those who will walk by faith. I have good things in store for those who will walk by faith and not by sight. Thomas was a man who wanted to see. He lived his life by seeing. But Abraham, he was a man who lived his life by faith. Faith does not look at the circumstances. Abraham didn't look at his body and say, you know, Lord, this body is a little bit old. This body is a little bit weak, a little bit fragile to be able to raise a boy at the age of 100. His body, he didn't look at his body. He saw by faith that what God said would be established. I want you to see this quickly in Deuteronomy 28, 11. It says this, the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. How does this happen? By planting and sowing seed. In, the, in, another, in another version, it says this, God will lavish you with good things. 
that word lavish means this. Man, I got so excited. It means to expand, to give in great amounts and without limit. Another version says this here, that the Lord will make you fertile. We are believing tonight that the Lord's going to make you fertile, that He'll lavish you with goods. He will, be, he will pour upon plenteous of goods in your life. Wherever you're watching from, I'm believing with you that as you sow tonight, as that you give tonight, that as you take a step of faith, as you walk by faith, that you too will be able to testify of the plenteous, of the goods, of the abundance that God has in store for you. You know, this word fertile in Deuteronomy 28, 11, when it says the Lord will make you fertile in every good thing. This word fertile means this, producing a large amount of something. In order for Isaac, back in Genesis 26, for him to receive that hundredfold return, he had to plant something to be able to harvest something. If you want to see a mighty harvest in your life, if you want to see a plenteous of goods, you have to plant a seed. Tonight, I want to encourage you to build your faith. Take a step of faith. Walk by faith, not by sight, by sowing a seed. There's details on the screen. Now you can be a part of that there. Allow the Lord to move in your life. And remember what the Lord, this is what the Lord told me, is that those who will walk by faith, I have good things in store for them. If you aren't watching on Facebook, you can go and hashtag donate. There will details come to you. Otherwise, go to the top of the page, click the donate button. If you're on the website, you can simply click the give button. Otherwise, there are details on the screen, wherever you're watching from, of ways to be a part of giving. I want you to lift one hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from and your provision. Father, I thank you for all those who have their hands lifted and hands raised. In the name of Jesus, we stand in agreement tonight that those who sow seeds tonight, who don't look at their financial situation, who don't look at their bank accounts, to look at their wallets, don't look at where they're currently at, but they look with eyes of faith as they sow tonight. Father, I thank you that you would pour out a blessing so great that it would come in like a flood in Jesus' name. Mm. We are believing for plenteous of goods. We are believing for fertile, fertile, fertile wounds, fertile seeds. Whatever is planted tonight, Father, I thank you that it would produce large amounts, plenteous of goods, much left over, access, abundance, the blessing of God in their lives. In Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you that they will testify of your goodness, your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We pray that every single one of you will encounter the Lord in the area of your finances. That as Brad just powerfully released this word and then prayed over every single one who is sowing a seed right now, it is our prayer that you will encounter him as Jehovah Jireh, mm. that you will encounter him as El Shaddai, the God of overflow, the yes. God of abundance. Will you join us now as we just declare the goodness of God, as we worship him and as we, as we thank him in advance for a miracle to take place in the area of our finances, in Jesus' name. Let's worship him.
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every single one. Every one of those who have been participating with us throughout this broadcast. We pray tonight even for every one of our partners. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for continual encounters. Yes, Lord. Yes. That we will encounter your glory, encounter your love, encounter your peace, encounter your joy. Mm. That we will encounter the fullness of your blessing. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can encounter you. Mm. We bless your holy name. Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, we almost can't, can't believe it. Another night, another broadcast has pretty much come to an end. In closing, I want to remind you, tomorrow night, Friday night, it's going to be the next, once again, 6 to 8 p.m. Central Africa time. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. I know that Nile and Taylor, Jade and Shantae are ready. And uh, the word of the Lord is going to come forth with such power. And I would even say precision. And uh, get ready. Get ready. Be expectant. Tag some young people and also tell them to head on over to the Facebook page which is the next.tv. You can also go and like it and uh, follow them on Instagram as well. I know that that's where many of the young people are actually at. They're on Instagram. So uh, go and support, go and like, go and follow and be part of what the Lord is doing through the next generation of believers. Then going into the Sunday, we've got exciting uh, church specials that again are coming to you live uh, on Faith TV. So uh, just sticking with uh, the uh, African time zone at uh, midnight Sunday morning, it's going to be faithchurch.com. So uh, it's hosted live in the United States of America, also broadcast right here in the continent of Africa on Faith TV, which airs out at midnight. And then going into the morning at 8 a.m. Central Africa time, it is Choose Life Church. And then at 9 a.m., we're going to be live uh, right here from Buffalo City, South Africa with Faith Worship. So do not miss Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Central Africa time. And then going into the afternoon at 5 p.m., it is time for hosting the Supernatural with Pastor Nikki van der Westerhazen. And then at 6 p.m. ending the church special sport that day for Sunday, it is none other than Pastor Ad Bosov with CRC Live. So you know what? We are excited and we are bringing you faith-filled programming right. all the way through. There are so many different ways in which you can remain connected with Faith TV. There's also Faith Now. Go to faithnow.app, get your subscription. And you know what? Exciting things are happening. But you know what? We have come to the end of another epic broadcast. 400 days of sure. consecutive live broadcasting. Woo. And we celebrated this night with you. So we are going to end off with the song, Nothing is impossible. Are you ready? There's one thing left to do. Come on. One, two, three. Faith Amen. Band, take, take us, us home. home. It's the kingdom, the earth, it's the power.